quiet matchup, but what's the potential and what do you have to do to avoid a letdown against a team on a downward slide? Yeah, well, this team's a tough team. They play really well at home, and so we know we got a challenge here. So we're trying to clinch the NFC East here today. It's a big game and a big game for them as well. So it's not going to be easy, and we understand that. Tony Romo, your roommate on the road, tell me how he's grown the most and where have you seen him uh, really make a jump this year? Just his commitment, his ability to lead this team. He's done an unbelievable job all year. He's, uh, he's always had a lot of potential, but he's playing great football and he's a leader of this team. Appreciate your time, Jason. All right, thank you. All right, back to you, Joe. All right, Pam, thanks, and thanks to Jason Witten as he stops by moments before he'll head out onto the field because the Dallas Cowboys will get the opening kickoff, and uh, we'll see that high-flying Cowboy offense. Yeah, and I think the point that Jason Witten made is very valid because if you think back to last year, Tony Romo, you know, took over in the middle of the season. Well, he had an opportunity to go through an offseason, came into this year in training camp knowing that he was the guy, and that with that, he then has been a much more effective leader this season. Hanson will kick it away. Nathan Jones and Miles Austin wait for it for Dallas. This is Austin from about three yards deep. And he ducks through at the 20 and brings it out to the 25 yard line. Almost broke that thing. 28 yard return. Here are some of the key inactives for Detroit. So not only do they play a team that's 11 and 1, but they do it without Boss Bailey, one of the most athletic linebackers. Kalimba Edwards, a coach's decision not playing. And then their most well known ride receiver. Roy Williams is inactive not on IR but it's a coin flip as to whether he'll play again this season with a bad knee and I think the loss of Roy Williams is going to impact them the greatest in this game because the Cowboys are going to score points and now the Lions will try to match that without their best receiver Cowboys started with a handoff to Julius Jones shakes one tackle then gets drilled by Kenoy Kennedy a gain of seven. You know, last week, Troy, this was a Detroit team that went into Minnesota, and you saw a lot of missed tackles. According to Rod Marinelli, their head coach, there were more quote unquote loafs than they've had all year, which means a lack of hustle. That, that's got to break Marinelli's heart. Here's a team that at that time was a game over 500 and sliding, and then to turn that performance in had to kill him. Well, effort's the very fabric of what he's about. I mean, and when that's violated, as it was last week, yeah, that's hard for him to swallow. Witten off his hands. It'll bring up third down and three. Just one note about Witten, who visited with Pam Oliver. 3,655 career yards. That's 73 yards shy of Doug Cosby, who's number one on the list for the Dallas Cowboys. This guy's racking up quite a career here as he plays in his fifth year. Yeah, and already this season has more receptions than what he had all of last year, and there's a lot of guys like that. I mean, when you look at what Terrell Owens has been able to do this year, I mean, a lot of players, Tony Romo included, he's obviously much younger in his career, but are off to having career best. Who's it against? If it's against Sean Rogers, that's an easy first down. Was he drawn off? Offside, number 92 defense. Five yard penalty. The result is a first down. Okay, so there you go. Three plays in, and Sean Rogers gives Dallas a free first down. Well, and he's the guy who I know Marinelli has talked with, and this defense, you know, in its most basic form, is only as good as really Sean Rogers is. And when he's playing great, which he's capable of doing. He's not had much of an impact for this defense over, you know, probably the last three or four weeks of the season. And that's been very disappointing to everyone within the organization. And you could tell now he's trying to get a little more effort out there, and then he gets called for being offsides. Back to the ground, back to Julius Jones bouncing it, and a nice gain on first down of eight. And we said this on Thanksgiving, and this is a Detroit defense that is only as good as its defensive tackles and it, it starts with Sean Rogers. You can add Corey Redding to the list who got the big deal still looking for his first sack. But if you want to pressure Tony Romo up the middle not a big quarterback you need to do that with your defensive front predominantly those two guys they need to step up and play well here today. Now you got to get pressure off the edge but then you also have to get inside pressure so that then the quarterback doesn't have a place to step up in the pocket. Second down and two, a toss to Jones, easy first down. 
at the Detroit 49 a gain of seven. So right now the Lions have to prove they can stop the run before Tony Romo tries to pick them apart. And and much like last week I mean if you and here comes Sean Rogers who it looks like he's got an injury he has he's not gotten probably as many snaps as what they'd like to see him him have over previous games primarily because of his conditioning. However this appears to be an injury. Romo throws completes to Creighton. He's to the 45 yard line. Picked up four. Brought down immediately by Gerald Alexander, the rookie safety. You know, you look at Detroit defensively, they've given up over 440 yards of offense the last two weeks on Thanksgiving against Green Bay and then last week against Minnesota. Green Bay was able to throw the football. Minnesota, on the other hand, they ran the ball effectively. I think watching that game last week, I was more disappointed in the pass defense of Detroit than I was in their run defense, even though they gave up over 200 yards rushing in that game. Second down and six, Romo completes. That's Witten's first of the day to the 35-yard line first down. You know, you start to look at the overall numbers for Tony Romo, and he's number one in the league this year at yards per completion. This is a Dallas offense that's number one in the NFL in average yards per play on first down. Romo has the most completions of 20 or more yards and the most touchdown passes of 20 or more yards and the 33 touchdowns for the season. Not only leads the NFC but is a Cowboys single season record. A fantastic year every way you cut it up and a good start for Julius Jones. As his forward progress will take him to the 31 yard line he picked up four. I mean you're talking about Tony Romo and and how well he has played. I, I don't know that people can fully comprehend what he has done nine times this year of the 12 games they played. He's had a quarterback rating of over 100 and that includes each of the last six games. Two of those games he's had a quarterback rating of over 90. So you're talking about 11 of the 12 games he's had he's played at a very high level and maybe his best game was in fact his worst statistical game and that was against Buffalo bringing the team back to win late. Julius Jones this time nowhere to go. Lost three yards Ernie Sims got his nose in there made the play the first guy was Paris Lennon the middle linebacker and that will bring up third down. Well Ernie Sims is a linebacker that they like a lot. He's a second year player. He's got great speed. He can pursue from sideline to sideline. Lennon had a chance made him cut inside of that tackle and then Ernie Sims there to clean it up. Now the crowds into the game for the first time so far it's third and nine. Romo throws way high. That one got away. Sam heard the intended receiver. It's fourth down. And that's a good job defensively by Detroit in getting Dallas to a third and long situation and then getting off the field. I think when this game as it progresses and we look at the end of the game as to what exactly happened if Detroit is able to win defensively on third down they're going to have a real good chance at being able to win this game. Dallas one of the best in the league converting on third down. How about the rookie year for Nick Folk as he tries from 50 and yanks it. Came in tied with Crosby of the Packers for the most points scored in the NFL this season. He misses, still no score. NASN Trivia Timeout. What player has the most sacks in NFL history? Stay tuned. The answer is coming up.
There are 380,000 NCAA student athletes. And most of us will go and pro. Most of us will go pro in something, something other, than, other sport. than sports. In something other than sports. Go to ncaastudent.org to find out how. Welcome back to NASN Trivia Timeout. Now, the answer. Since Sachs became an official NFL stat in 1982, no player registered more than defensive end Bruce Smith, who sacked opposing quarterbacks 200 times in his 19-year career. John Kitna says every time he lines up under center and drops back to throw, they've been coming and getting him all year. There's been a lot of getting over the year, too. 48 sacks. He has been pounded. Quick throw is to the sideline. Sean McDonald forced out of bounds by Anthony Henry. Again, of only two. I mean, this is a guy. There are the numbers 48 times. They actually added one from a week ago. So this is an offensive line that's allowed the most sacks in the NFL at 51 coming into the game. And I think a lot of people think it's because Mike March sends out five receivers every time, you know, and then forces a five man protection. And that that is not necessarily the case. He's been hit a lot, even in max protections. Handoff is to Kevin Jones. How about that? Down inside the 45. A 15-yard run and into Dallas territory are the Detroit Lions. And I think this is how you really have to attack this Dallas defense if you're going to run the football. you got to run right at him. And he hits it right between the guard and center gap. You know, Brady James there and in a position to make a play, he was unable to do it. You know, Kevin Jones is one of these running backs, does not get a lot of carries, but in the games when he gets 15 carries or more, he is actually very effective running the football. Ball start, 83 offense. Five yards, it's still first down. So it's first and 15. We go for a game break. Out to Kurt Menefee. Okay, Joe, opening drive, Giants at the Eagles. Donovan McNabb finds a way to escape and then finds Brian Westbrook for an 18-yard score. Eagles quickly on top, 7-0. Let's get back to Joe, Troy, and Pam in Detroit. All right, Kurt, so... McNabb, who is back off the ankle and thumb injuries, sacked 12 times in the first meeting between those two clubs. Avoiding the sack and the pressure and throwing for a touchdown. Here's Kevin Jones, good for five. Meanwhile, Kevin Jones, Troy, last week, all game, three carries, one yard at Minnesota. Yeah, and then you go back to the week before against Green Bay, and as a team, they ran the ball 30 times in that game, and, and I think they're going to get back to that today. I don't know that they're going to run it 30 times, but they're going to have to be balanced, as they've already shown. Kevin Jones got the five yards back. Picks his way. Kevin Jones is wrestled down and looks to have enough for a first down. He picks up 10. Well, and like I said, where they're able to attack them is inside. They're not trying to get out on the edges because the Cowboys team speed is just too good. They're getting a good push inside by Mulatalo and Raiola, along with Steven Peterman, and they're getting on those blocks, and then the Cowboys unable to get off the blocks, and they're creating some pretty good running lanes right now for Kevin Jones. Already 30 yards on three carries for Jones, and now it's T.J. Duckett. T.J. Duckett, touchdown. Well, again, you're going to get a look at it inside and the job that these guys do. A little bit of a counteraction there. But again, Raiola on his man and just creating enough of a lane there for T.J. Duckett. A nice job by this offensive line, and you just got to believe they're awfully excited about finally giving the opportunity to come off the ball in, in run block. Oh, 
It's seven to nothing. Mad Mike Martz, a quick throw to McDonald, started the day, and then on the ground, 32 yards to cap it for T.J. Duckett. His second rushing touchdown of the season, 7-0 Detroit. Dude. Dude. It used to be easy to name college football's greatest play. There's a new contender to the crown. Barmore throws it over the middle, complete to Thompson. Thompson looking for a block. He laterals it to Curry, and Curry laterals it again, and it's caught again. And Tomlin now on the lateral, and now the lateral to Thompson, and he laterals it back to Maddox on the other side. Maddox looking for a block. He fakes the Fakes the lateral to Curry. Now he laterals it to Curry. Curry's at the 49-yard line. He's dancing around. He throws it back now to Maddox, who throws it across the field to Barmore. Barmore looking to run. He's looking for a block. He's got a convoy. He's going to throw it to Thompson. Thompson's at the 30-yard line. Thompson now laterals it back to Curry at the 35. They're running out of spaces. Curry fakes. He's going to lateral it go, to Tomlin. Go, Tomlin's run. got a chance to go. Tomlin's got a chance to go. He laterals it. Now he's going to go to Maddox. Maddox at the 30-yard line. And now it's a lateral. And Curry's still going. No way. Curry's no still way. Going. He hits out. It's a touchdown. It's a touchdown. Curry scores. The game is over. See all the best college football action live on NASN. Last week, 23 rushing yards. Just about all of it came on their last possession, by the way, at Minnesota. This drive, 63. One quick throw to McDonald started the possession, and then it was Kevin Jones with T.J. Duckett pounding it in from 32 yards. Again, it's Miles Austin. Got hit first at the 20, out to the 25 again. So what just happened? T.J. Duckett thanking Dominic Riola, his center, for the great blocking and the defense for the Cowboys. What happened? 7-0. Lions on top. and baseball gloves and much more. Visit NASN.com. Druid's Glen Golf Resort, voted European Golf Resort of the Year 2005. A golfer's paradise in the Garden of Ireland. Two championship golf courses of contrasting design. The luxurious Marriott Druid's Glen Hotel and Country Club, featuring 148 specially appointed guest rooms and a magnificent spa and health centre. Visit our driving range, pro shops, golf academy, and get your golfing tips or tuition from our resident PGA teaching professional. Defense for Dallas trying to figure out what just hit him for Detroit. Only their second opening possession drive for a touchdown this season, and it started with the missed field goal, a 50-yard try by Nick Folk. So Dallas has it for the second time. A little pump fake and a handoff to Marion Barber. One of the hardest runners to bring down in the NFL picks up five. 
Boy, he really is, too. I mean, the guy plays hard each and every snap. And you know, over the last few ball games, he's gotten more carries, actually, than Julius Jones. I know there are a lot of people that wonder, you know, why Marion Barber isn't just announced as the starter. But I think when, when you talk to those within the Dallas Cowboy organization, they like what they've got. They like Julius Jones. They like the change-up pace that Marion Barber gives them. The way they've been doing it works. Why make any changes? Sean Rogers back in there for Detroit up front. Second down and five. Romo has it thrown back at him. And that was big Sean Rogers. He got his hand up and knocked it away. It's third and five. Well, I know Rod Marinelli was disappointed in the effort in Sean Rogers last week. And, you know, as I said a little bit earlier, he came into this game a little more motivated. You can tell he's getting pressure on the quarterback, something that he had not been able to do. He gets his hands up and bats the ball. He's already had one interception for a touchdown this year. I think had he have been able to locate that one, he might have been able to get underneath it. I know in talking with Sean Rogers, he says his game is all about disruption. No technique involved, and it looks like today he's going to try to be disruptive. A blitz. Romo wrestled down by Alexander. Second sack for the rookie, and he came through untouched. It's fourth down. Yeah, Gerald Alexander coming up the middle, and you know, I like what Detroit's doing right now as far as mixing things up. You see him right there off the edge. They just turn him loose. Tony Romo not able to get it out of his hands in time. I'm not even sure that he saw that Gerald Alexander was, in fact, going to be a free blitzer. McBriar gets a good snap. Hits a line drive punt. Walters has a little room. You could hear somebody telling him that from the sideline. He didn't have room for long. Just Pat Watkins threw him down. And Walters isn't getting up. Frustration for Tony Romo as they look at Troy Walters on the field here in Detroit. I'll trade you a Red Sox home jersey and a Rangers t-shirt for that Pirates jacket. No way! I want that Cardinals hoodie and that Braves away uniform and an item to be named later. You drive a hard bargain. Majestic Athletic, the official uniform supplier for all 30 Major League Baseball teams. Available now all over Europe at NASN.com. times in an NFL game where players from both sides taking a knee out on the field and hoping that Troy Walters is okay after Pat Watkins grabbed him wrestled him threw him down and you can see the head of Walters hit the turf right there. We have seen him move down on the field. Our camera operators are telling us that but they are huddled around Troy Walters and everybody praying that he is okay. We'll take another break and come back to Detroit after this. NASN brings you unrivaled coverage of the best sports North America has to offer. Get the best seats in the house for the biggest games in the best leagues 24 hours a day, seven days a week. 
Watch the NFL from preseason all the way to the playoffs with over 60 regular season games, the postseason, and live coverage of Super Bowl 42 from Phoenix. Get live coverage of every game of the World Series and don't miss an inning of the MLB regular season with up to 260 regular season games and the All-Star Game Live. Experience the most comprehensive coverage of the NHL anywhere in Europe with over 200 live regular season games, the 2008 NHL All-Star Game, and the Stanley Cup Finals Live. NASN takes you to pit lane in the high-octane world of NASCAR with live Bush Series racing and keeps you up to date with the Nextel Cup and Truck Series with daily episodes of NASCAR Now. Get courtside with the best conferences in NCAA college basketball with a packed schedule of games between the top teams and unrivaled coverage of March Madness. See the power and skill of the finest players in college football with full season and bowl series coverage, including all the BCS games, live. And with all your favorite news highlights and analysis shows, including PTI and Around the Horn, you won't miss a minute from any of your favorite sports all season long. Log on to NASN.com now and join the world of NASN, your leader in North American sports. friends of Troy Walters he got up may have been knocked out cold on that tackle by Pat Watkins eventually got up as you can see able to walk off the field so that's great news and for the Lions they lead seven to nothing and have the ball back under six to play in the first quarter and they stay on the ground Kevin Jones looking for somewhere to go Back to the line of scrimmage. By the way, the 63 rushing yards on that first drive by Detroit, the most rushing yards on one drive all season. And so far, five of the six plays that Mike Martz has dialed up have been on the ground. Yeah, and I think maybe the Dallas Cowboys defensively were a little surprised by, by the approach of Detroit. I mean, you come to a game certainly against the Lions, and you understand that they like to throw the football. Martz is committed to throwing the football, and then they came out and ran it pretty successfully. Kedna throws, hits McDonald, who is making moves on Anthony Henry, and he's into Dallas territory with a 13-yard catch and run. And Sean McDonald, when they do throw the football, he's really going to have to be the guy, him and Mike Furry. But Sean McDonald will now be taking over the X position that is usually manned by Roy Williams. But as we said earlier, Roy Williams, who is injured, won't be playing, may not be back the rest of this season. Sean McDonald, who's a very accomplished receiver, has put up some pretty big numbers both here and as well as while he's when while he was with the St. Louis Rams at the 48 of Dallas Kitna drops it off underneath Jones another first down for Detroit talk about McDonald his years in St. Louis he spent four years there and only Randy Moss and Wes Welker have more catches with their new team here in 2007. McDonald is already up over 60 in this Detroit Lions offense. Duck it in the backfield. He gets it. And picks up two. Chris Canty was in there along with Aiken Adele. Second down and eight for a Dallas defense that while the offense and Romo and T.O. they've got all the headlines. It's a Dallas defense that has been progressing all year in their version, Wade Phillips version of the 3-4 defense. Yeah, and they've been good against the run too coming into this game. You wouldn't know it based on the way that Detroit was able to run through them on, on that first possession, but you know, they've been pretty solid really in all areas. Getting the throws and It makes it a third and pretty manageable, about third and one, third and two. 
Dallas moved to Marcus Ware on the other side of the defense and he was working on that last play against Damian Woody who is making only a second start at right tackle. Marcus on the right side of the defense and this pass is complete for a first down to Mike Furry. A sliding catch and a completion of 10. Well, it's a great job by Mike Furry coming back and catching the ball, but it looked like he was short of the first down here. Now did he foul, catch it? Roughing the passer. 94 defense. Half a distance to the goal. First down. And on the back end of it, they get to Marcus Ware for roughing John Kitna. Well, he's where he gets Backus, and they're right there, and that's a good call. I mean, had he have let up after Kitna got rid of the football right there, just let up. But instead, he drives him into the ground, and, and that is what the referee is looking for when you're talking about roughing the passer. And you wonder how much of that hit there, because that's not DeMarcus Ware. He normally does not do something like that. How much of that was in retaliation to all of the talk coming into this ball game around John Kitna? Here's Kevin Jones, who's down inside the 10. And in case you don't know what Troy's talking about, John Kitna talked at the end of last year after Dallas lost at home to Detroit Kitna on a radio show talked about Brady James and said sometimes I don't know that he knew where he was at and about Terrence Newman he's not Marcus Trufant he doesn't have that kind of ability then Terrence Newman came back and said well he better hope I don't blitz off the edge I've got 15 20 30 thousand dollars whatever the fine is the two shared a moment prior to kickoff here today Brady James wasn't in on it. DeMarcus Ware just roughed him up. Kevin Jones gets it to the six. It'll be third down. And about three. Well, and Rod Marinelli, I mean, if you look at what they're doing right now offensively, the Detroit Lions, he's got to really be enjoying this as much as what this offensive line is because they've been very balanced so far in these first two possessions. And as a result, you can see that the Dallas Cowboys defensively really are on their heels. But is Mike Martz enjoying it? <laughs> now that's another question. And I don't think he is. Third down and three. <laughs> Kedna. Underneath the catch is made. First down Lions at the one. This time Sean McCune hangs on. He got a big hit and a big five yard completion from Kidna. And hey, a good job up front by this Detroit Lions offense. I mean, giving Kitna a place to step up into the pocket and then pick it up McHugh. And that's a pretty big first down for them. It was Watkins who hit him. It's first and goal from just outside the one. Saipa is an eligible receiver as an extra offensive tackle, and Kevin Jones gets it back to the line of scrimmage. That's it. Are the Detroit Lions about to take a 14 to nothing lead over the 11 and one Dallas Cowboys? You know, it's 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 somewhat surprising. I'll be honest with you. I, I do know that in talking with a number of players there with the Cowboys, I, I don't think for a second that Wade Phillips or anyone else has taken this game lightly. I mean, historically, this has been a tough place for Dallas to play. But the Lions came into this game with a great deal of confidence. Play action. Pass out of the reach of McHugh. He was behind the defense. <laughs> Mike Martz has got his hand on top of his head. It was there. Kidna just put a little too much air under it. Yeah, a little too much. And Sean McHugh just not quite able to get high enough to make the grab. Mistimed his jump just a little bit. And you can see that. I mean, you just don't know how many opportunities you're going to get for touchdowns down here. I mean, this is a stingy defense. And on second down, it's the best down to run play action. You know, now here on third down, history would say that Mike March is going to throw the football. But from what I've seen, I almost expect him to hand it off and let him punch it in. They do go to the air. Pass incomplete. A penalty flag is down. Again, it was Kidna trying to find the tight end. A flag is over on the sideline at the five yard line. If it's against Detroit, it's declined. Illegal formation. Number 34.